It's Monday, and it's time for a new episode of the Joust About Careers podcast. I'm your host, Brian Brock, and I'm a career advisor and English teacher at Van Buren High School who has seen too many people spend a lot of money and time working toward careers they don't enjoy or that don't help them achieve the purposes they've identified for their lives. I want to make sure that doesn't happen to anyone else. My guest today is Brooke Nissen, the Executive Director of Focus Recovery and Wellness Community. Brooke will be sharing about what she does as an Executive Director, how her work in criminal justice has led her to this point on her career journey, how she deals with stress, and much more. I hope that what Brooke shares today will help you make better career decisions and lead to a fulfilling career journey. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another edition of the Joust About Careers podcast, where we talk about careers and what students can do to set themselves up for career success. And today we're lucky enough to have Brooke Conroy Nissen with us, and she is going to be talking about her career, both in law enforcement and as an executive director of the Focus Recovery and Wellness Community in Finley. So, Brooke, thank you very much for being willing to share a little bit about your experience. And I'd love to know, as an executive director, what is it that a day might look like for you? Oh, wow. That that is a very good question and a hard one because my day to day is really, it's hard to describe because I'm in a lot of meetings, but also at a drop of a dime, like there could be something going on in my facility that I need to stop and respond to that situation, or I have a team member who needs me in the moment, so I respond to them. So I do prioritize though that my participants and my staff come first and things like that. But day to day activity is a lot of. T- uh, one thing I didn't know was budgeting. Who did not go to school for math, <laughs> and so yeah, that became a whole another huge learning curve for myself, which I love to learn. So it works out. But um, a lot of the focus executive director is around human resources and managing your budget for your facilities. So making sure everyone's getting along and that you have enough money to pay everyone at the end of the month. <laughs> yeah, that's those are the goals. <laughs> So you started out in law enforcement, and can you talk a little bit about your degrees and where you earned those in law enforcement, and then what you did in law enforcement when you graduated from college? So I went to BGSU, go Falcons for all those uh, Ziggy Zumba fans, Um, and I decided, first I did start off in nursing. And again, uh, science and math, nope, not for me. So I found my niche, though, with criminal justice. Um, I fell in love with my intro course and the philosophies. So I really dove into that, and I decided to do that uh, extra lap and get my master's degree um, because, again, it's it was a passion that I started to really develop around criminal justice. And probably like a lot of college kids, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so I started working community corrections, um, and that led me though into the corrections department at Wood County Sheriff's Office. And so I became deputized by being a correctional officer there, and I did that for about a year. And then it led me down this path to treatment work. So I am thankful though for having the time I spent with law enforcement, um, working as a corrections deputy because I got to work with a lot of great officers. I got to learn the ins and outs of the processes that they have to go through. Um, And then I had it kind of then on the other side of working in corrections with that. So when you say you worked in corrections, you were in the jail? Yes. Yep, I was a correctional officer. Were there a a lot of females in those positions or not? No, it, um, we probably experienced we are required to have at least six on a shift and there is only the requirement was to have one female on shift at least and so usually that's what we had to run with Um, because one thing you do see with the inmate population is more male than females in jails so what led you to take that intro to criminal justice class you just had a little bit of interest in it and you thought oh i'll check it out you know i need a gen ed or whatever 
uh, or is there something else that led to that? So I flirted kind of with the idea when I first picked nursing. This was in high school um, because I had an uncle who um, had addiction um, struggles and he had been justice involved and it made me reflect back on a time that um, I had law enforcement come to my house before um, due to his involvement. And so I've always had this respect. And so I'm like, and social service fields were always attractive to me. Um, so that's what kind of made me do the dive to try that intro course. And it worked out really well. Right, right. So the, when you started down that path to nursing, uh, when you first went to college, was it something that happened in a class or something that happened in a facility where, you know, you're seeing blood and, and all of that? Uh, what, how did you know that that wasn't the career path for you? It was my chemistry course. It was, um, it, like, I think if I really would apply it, I probably could have stuck it through and done it, but I lost like interest. It wasn't a topic that I was passionate about. And I, and I know there would have been more to it, but I'm like, there's a different way that I can help others mm -hmm. outside of nursing. So that's what I decided. And then when I talked to other, I also had the opportunity to talk to other students um, at college who were in the CJ field, and they were passionate too, so that really helped to guide my decisions. Yeah, I'm glad you said that as far as there's a lot of different ways you could achieve your purpose of, of helping people. Nursing is a great way to do it, but I would tend to be in, in your boat that I wouldn't love the chemistry, so I probably wouldn't go that route either, and I've, I've gone the teaching route, which allows me to help people. So yeah, uh, a lot I mean, of different ways to do those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's I have such appreciation for people that work with other people because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Now, you also then came to Finley, and you worked uh, in the criminal justice program as a supervisor at the Family Resource Center. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that. How did you end up going there from Wood County? How did all that happen, and, and what was that position like? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, my When I got out of corrections, I went back to community corrections, and I worked my way up to be a program manager there. So I worked at an adult male community corrections doing cognitive behavioral therapy um, and managing case management staff that worked in the facility. And then again, worked my way up to human resources and accreditation management there. And so... I missed working with people, though, because that was a very administrative focused role. Um, and I, the staff I was supervising were all administrative, so not working with people. And I found that was lacking for myself. And I had a really great former employee of mine um, reach out to me that there is this job available at Family Resource Center, and it was her old job. So um, I applied, and it was very much a blessing to get because learning about more of the behavioral health work in the community and outside of a correctional or community correction, the atmosphere is much different. And so I was able to really dive into the criminal justice programming that we have in the community at Hancock County. You've held obviously quite a few different positions and you then became the executive director there at Focus on Recovery or Focus Recovery. And you know, you talked a little bit about you wanted to help people. Are there any characteristics you feel like you have that have made you a great fit for these criminal justice positions, uh, executive director, so forth, that other people could look at themselves and say, hey, I have a lot of those same characteristics. Maybe these would be good career uh, possibilities for me. Yeah, I was fortunate at Family Resource Center, we did a personality index uh, survey, and I've never taken one that's been so accurate in my entire life to describe me, because it gives results, and I don't know the, remember the name of it, but it was great, and it identified my personality index as a collaborator, and so I recognize that that is a must, um, that you need to be able to work with others, um, foster teamwork in an environment, um, because in order for things to move along, trying to take it all on your own is not something that you can do. Um, and I also think another big quality is having empathy. Um, I, I said we work with people and our staff are people. 
and they need to have that as well. So I think that's another big one. So I would assume with all of these positions that you have, obviously with corrections and then as an executive director, I'm guessing all of them come with a certain level of stress. Just because you are responsible for, you know, people as the executive director, as a corrections officer, you're also responsible for people and their safety and hopefully their re rehabilitation. And what advice do you have for someone who might be going into some of these career fields that would help them deal with that day-to-day -day stress they're likely to face? Stress is real. And so having a support system is huge to be able to talk to and um, also developing a close personal relationship in the work environment with your supervisor is also very helpful because you have to have that person to talk to, especially when you're evaluating that so they can help you also in that moment. Um, I've also run three half marathons. So running is a big stress relief of mine. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, um, but I found that worked for me, especially when I knew the more stressed I was, get the farther I was running. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm finding myself running again, which is absolutely great because it's a warning sign for myself that I'm not taking care of myself when I stop them. Interesting. So are you a morning runner or an evening runner or any time you can find time? Yeah, I used to be a morning runner. And then as I'm getting older, I'm like, I need the evening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I what, need to play a looser on that one. What races have you run? Uh, mini um, and Mommy. Okay. Mini Money or the Muddy Mini Marathon. Okay. Marathon, yeah. Okay. So I've done that one twice. And I can't remember the name of my first one. That was in Dayton. And they had hills, so whew. <laughs> I did not go back to that one. <laughs> now, obviously, you have your degrees and, and so forth, but you also talk about becoming a licensed chemical dependency counselor. What did it take to earn that license? Uh, what other licenses maybe are available to people in corrections, in, um, you know, recovery and wellness? Uh, talk a little bit about advancing your your abilities and career by earning some licensures yeah i so they mentioned briefly i had worked my way up to a program manager role um doing cognitive behavioral therapy work um because that was at my license level which was a chemical dependency counselor assistant um it's your very basic level when you start off working with addiction work um so I earned that by doing 40 hours of courses that were online, paid by my job, and then I was under supervision of someone who was licensed in a higher license or strictly around chemical dependency work. So the license that I hold now is a licensed chemical dependency counselor three, and the reason that I can't be an independent license is because my degree um, only permits me to get it to a three um, because I did not do a social work or a counseling field. I found that out and that was fun, <laughs> but I, it took me about four years of educational work just because I was able to do it in the facility that I was working at and in the role I was. And I had an amazing supervisor who was a licensed um, social worker. So educational background does matter is what I'm seeing when it comes to licenses. Um, but usually what you're going to find a lot in, is the chemical dependency counselor assistant is usually the one you start with. Um, it's kind of getting your feet wet and then you're working your way up towards something higher in that work. Um, again, I'm not a mental health counselor, so that's a different route that you'd have to take with that with different licensures and education requirements. Um, I'm also a peer support certified um, supervisor, which means that um, individuals who get a peer support certificate, these are people who use their lived experience in their life, um, either with a trauma, mental health or addiction and walk beside someone on their path to recovery. Um, I'm a supervisor that way, so that's another certification you can always look at getting. And that's a 40 hour course, um, again, with uh, a test at the end. There, yeah, both these had tests. I should probably throw that out there. Some people get test anxiety. Um, but I'm trying to think what other, I, I am certified in a lot of different group facilitations. It really depends what type of work you choose to do and what your company is going to support. Right. I've, yeah, I've been very 
fortunate to have the jobs that I have that have really invested in my education outside good. of college. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Social work. Is that, if, if a person were to get a social work degree, would that lend itself to going into law enforcement or would a person absolutely need that criminal justice degree to move into law enforcement? I think if you did social work and became law enforcement, that would be amazing. Um, your social work field teaches you a lot about like the human sciences behind things and law enforcement has their own level of training. So you're going to get training in that way. But I think having more of a background understanding of like theories and working development and motivational interviewing type skills takes you very far when you're trying to work with people. Right. What's yeah. the best part of your current position? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, the best part is my team. I have recognized, as I said, my roles, you can't do things solo. Like, you can get so far, but it's really about working with others and getting to watch their growth and you're learning from them as well. Like I learn something every day from one of my team members. So that's probably my best part, not my new role. Good. Looking back now, uh, as you know, I've been out of school here for a few years, is there anything that you now know about careers that looking back, you wish you had known when you were in high school? Yes, definitely. Um, I wish I probably would have had more of an understanding of um, what it meant to like go to college and look at courses to take and how those are going to like impact then choices that you can have in a career. Because like I said like I had no idea that my um, licensed to be a chemical dependency counselor, I couldn't go for my independent license because it, my education stopped me. So that's something I learned in the career field, but it's, I also probably didn't take enough opportunities <laughs> that I recognize too. So I, that's, uh, I could take some accountability on that one. When you're in high school, you're just trying to get to college sometimes and yeah, you know, eh, I could have done better on that one. But. You were in your book though. That's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to someone recently and I'm like, I can't believe I was allowed to do that. <laughs> not my skill level <laughs> well but i i think a lot of us look back and say wow opportunities were there and i didn't take advantage and if there's one thing i would hope students would learn from talking with other people is how often they say man i wish i'd taken advantage of opportunities and i think if, if students will start doing that they're going to learn so much and like you said be better prepared maybe maybe not make that mistake of uh, not realizing that I, I can't get to a certain level if I go this route and I have to do other things to get to that level. So I think there's a lot of things like that where more students, if they get those opportunities, take advantage of those opportunities, they will learn from those experiences. Yeah. And I remember like, I really enjoyed high school. So I, I do, I look back and I enjoyed my high school experiences and I, my teachers were great. So it's, yeah, as I said, it was me learning that one and not really taking a dive in on the resources that were available, which is all right. It, it happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like I think you're doing very well where you are right now based on uh, what you've accomplished. So, Brooke, I really appreciate you sharing about your career. I hope that if anyone is interested in law enforcement or uh, recovery, addiction, et cetera, that they will reach out to you and ask some other questions and hopefully be better prepared for their lives after high school as a result of learning from your experience. So thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you. This is really great. And I will definitely share my contact information with you if anyone wants to do a follow-up. I'm definitely here to talk. Thank you very much, Brooke. Thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the Joust About Careers podcast. I hope you learned valuable information from this career story. And to be sure you don't miss upcoming episodes, please click subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform so you'll know when the next episode is released. Thank you for watching. And as always, this is the place to go to learn just about careers.